Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the word world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. So I'm going to ask uh, some questions of those who are or have been and love. Uh, I mentioned this ahead of time because if your beloved is in the room or is likely to watch the stream, you know, um, you better own up to being in love. So who here, having said that, who here is or has been in love? Okay, thank you. Those of you who have had that experience, how do you know? Heart beats faster. Your heart beats faster, okay, physiologically. Now, so if I go jogging, I'm, am I in love? <laughs> if I go jogging. Um, <laughs> if, if I exercise, am I in love? No, not. So my heart beats faster. It's, it's one thing that happens. is not necessarily the way I know, though. How else might I know? It's just a feeling inside you. Just a feeling inside of you. Before... Is, are there other ways that you know? By the way, before I move on. You think about them all the time. You think about them all the time. Yeah. You don't always think what they want you to be thinking, but you think about them all the time. You just know. It's just something you know. And before you have that experience, people tell you, you just know. And you're like, thanks a lot. That is not helpful. How do, I, how do I know if I'm in love? How do I know if this is it? How do I know if this person is, is, is the person that I'm going to fall, fall in love with? And people who are in love or happy in love say, I yeah, just know. Think about them all the time. Your heart beats faster. You, you want to spend time with them. You care about them. You care about their interests and their wishes. But ultimately, you just know. Can you fall, like, decide, I'm going to fall in love and make it happen? No. You can do things that might create opportunities. You can, can set yourself up to fall in love, but you can't make it happen. Can you force love if it's not there or reciprocated? Nope. You can get people to say they love you back or maybe even think it, but you can't make somebody else love you. And it's not because, oh, well, this is better than, than somebody else's behavior or I did X, Y, Z right instead of doing ABC. Those can, again, make it easier. But at the end of the day, it happens because you encounter something in the other, in your beloved, that connects. And that connects with this profound, overwhelming feeling that can't be well described you know, how many thousands of songs are written about it? How many thousands of years have people been writing poems and creating art around it? But it's still something that you know. In 
the gospel today. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, it's a different kind of love here. This is not in love. So the in love is analogous. It's not the same. Um, but if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Another advocate. That implies that Jesus is an advocate. Advocate is one who walks alongside a person and, or group of people. Often unrecognized, very seldom appreciated. I mean, think about people who do advocacy work. They're usually up against systems, powerful people, decisions that, that oppress the vulnerable. And so people who do advocacy are standing up for the vulnerable. So Jesus, as advocate for humanity, stands up for humanity, is crucified for humanity, and we are still in the Easter season, is, is crucified and resurrected for humanity. But he says, I will not leave you orphaned. And this is, this is told in John before the crucifixion. So he's telling, telling the disciples, I'm going to go away, but you'll receive another advocate. And how are you going to know him? Because he abides with you. That's how you'll know you'll know because it'll be in you. Now, John has this way of folding, folding uh, the gospel. So the, the beginning, this is one of those textual, textual analysis things where the, in, in the beginning of the gospel, there are activities and explanation, and then in the second half of the gospel, there's explanation and events. But also in this passage, it's folded in. Jesus is saying, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Sometimes we think of that as the kind of if-then that uh, this is how you prove that you love me. But it doesn't say in order, in order to prove that you love me. It's not that kind of if you love me, you gotta prove it to me. Same way the cat, you know, says if you love me, you'll open the door. If you love me, you'll open the door. If you love me, you know. Um, it's not that kind of if you love me. It's just a fact. And if you love me, that love is in you. you. You can't create it. You can't create it by following the commandments. It's because of that love that you follow the commandments. And then it says, I'll send you another. I won't leave you alone. And the world can't receive him. Again, this is not because the world is somehow prohibited from receiving. It's that the world is mired in distractions. This is talking about the world that, uh, that turns away, that embraces brokenness, cannot receive him or know him, but you know because he abides with you. I will not leave you orphaned. So now we're, that's the coming into Jesus. I will not leave you open. In a while, the world will no longer see me, but you will. Why? Because I live in you. How do you know? Because you've encountered me, and in me you've encountered the love of God. And... In encountering the love of God, you receive the Holy Spirit. And then because of those things, you'll keep my commandments. On that day, you will know I am in my Father, and you in me, etc. I'm going to take it backwards, because I'm saying it's, it's, it's focused on the center. So backwards, I will love them and reveal myself to them. So first, Jesus reveals himself to us. Then, those who love me will be loved by my Father. Or, backwards, by my Father I am loved, so that I may love them. And those who love me will keep my commandments. It says, and, and um, they will have my commandments and keep them. Are those who love me backwards, those who love me will keep my commandments. Do you see where I'm going? That, that, that it's, it's not here. It sounds as though, or we can read it as though, uh, because you keep my commandments, or because you follow my commandments, or because you've tried to receive the Holy Spirit, or because you have in some way acknowledged this presence that's impossible to describe, despite thousands of years of trying to describe it, and thousands of hymns 
trying to describe it, it's impossible to describe the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You know it because you encounter the Holy Spirit, and that is what enables you to follow the commandments. Hear this as a promise that it will happen. It will happen, it will happen. You cannot force love. You cannot force resurrection. You cannot force the alleluia of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the joining with Christ in it. But if you open yourself to receive it, it will happen and it completely transforms the way you experience life, like being in love. Now, I don't expect people to think about the Holy Spirit all the time, like they have to do their beloved, and I hope it doesn't make your heart race. Um, but it's that kind of transformation. It changes the way you experience life. It makes the experience of the other matter all of the other in our lives. It makes what matters to them matter. It makes you willing to care about what's going on in other people's lives so that that advocate that advocates for you dwells in you to advocate for another. <clears throat> Pray for it to happen. Experience it when it does happen. Allow it to be for you. Whatever it is that God needs to work in you because it will change. When, when Paul talks to the Areopagus, you know, uh, Athens is a college town, right? Uh, people like to debate, people like to, to have, talk theory and philosophy, and then there's this, this uh, unknown, uh, uh, what do you call it, statue to the unknown God, and, and it's great, it's a, just a great sermon. Because the Athenians are trying to think their way into salvation. And Paul says, let God transform you into salvation. So today we celebrate the indwelling of, of the Holy Spirit. Just so you know, Thursday is coming Ascension, and next week is Pentecost, when we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming to the community. In between now and then, I invite you to just stop and recognize if you have those moments that say, oh, that's how I know. Because I just might ask you about it next week. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for Christ and for promising not to leave us alone, even in this time where many of us are lonely. Allow us to trust that you are always present, every moment, every day, from before our birth to after our death. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.